Well, thank you, Justice Institute, and thank you all for being here to support one of the most important and finest educational institutions in BC, and probably Canada. I thank, in particular, <laughs> Dr. Michelle Tarko, Bernie Magman, Chair of the Justice Institute Foundation Board, Tracy Campbell, the Executive Director, and I'd like to thank uh, Rosalind Campbell for her words and tell you that <clears throat> um, working for First Nations in Canada over the past 40 or so years, I've considered to be an honor because, frankly, 41 years ago, there wasn't much work being done for them. And the Musqueam Indian Nation is a leader in the changes of laws and the, and the making of laws much more fair for our Indigenous people than any other single First Nation in the country of Canada that I know of. I'm deeply honored to receive this award and to thank the Justice Institute, my wife, Colette, of 49 years. Uh, many people have told me that she's probably up for sainthood. <laughs> and I want to thank my law firm, Blake's. They've been a big supporter here for years, as has the Canby Surgery Center and Dr. Day and uh, the people involved with the Canby Surgery. And of course, former President Jack McGee and is here tonight with his lovely wife, Donna, and Jack was a wonderful president of the J.I. for many, many years. In addition, I'm very happy to receive the Pantages Award. Anthony, or Tony Pantages, and I met at the UBC Law School in 1959, became very close friends. We worked together and were very, very dear friends. I miss him dearly. He was a wonderful person, and I thank and respect and wish the very best to his wife, Diane, and the, the Pantages family. They're wonderful people. The Justice Institute grants BAs, MAs, and honorary doctorate degrees. It's ex essentially, it's a, a university. There's no difference. That's what universities do. I've asked a number of people in uh, how many students would be in attendance at the Justice Institute in a given year. And I've gotten estimates from 450 to 3,000 people. The real answer is 30,000 people go to the Justice Institute in a given year. Not many know that. And I want the government to know that better, and I want the uh, public generally to know that. It's an amazing place. Who would train, for example, our ambulance drivers if it wasn't for the Justice Institute? Not to mention the police, the fire, the prison guards, and many other very, very helpful uh, endeavors in our community. I've had the pleasure, as I said, of working for First Nations for about 40 years, and I've seen profound changes in the laws of Canada as a result of that. Uh, 40 years ago, the Indian Act was dominating First Nations. If you have uh, time someday, read that statute. You won't believe some of the sections in it. It was terrible. That's changed and changing, and I want to tell you that the Justice Institute has 1,500 Indigenous people going to it each year. That's remarkable, in my opinion, and I congratulate them. <laughs> Just to show you the difference, when I was at UBC, there were two First Nations students in the entire university. We've come a long way. I want to thank the Justice Institute again and all of you. Thank you very much. <laughs> 